This is Ray's North-South Magnetic Switching Generator number three. This is going to be a tutorial showing how and what the principles are involved in this possible over unity device. We'll be going over these three principles, right angle magnetics, 30 degree flapper zone, and neutralization by capping. So first of all, we'll go ahead and go over the 90 degree angle magnetics. I'll set it up and I'll be back. Okay, we're set up for the right angle magnetics, the principle. I'm going to demonstrate this, but as we bring in a secondary magnet at right angles, there is a resultant force. You'll be able to see this on here. that lifts the secondary magnet and what's happening is north and north repel so it's being lifted and pushed and the south north is being attracted so it gives you a double force so there is quite a bit of a twist in there on the opposite side as the large magnet is rotating we come around and we have an opposite effect pushes down well that's pretty standard magnetics <laughs> as they go huh? but the problem has always been for me if there is a way to efficiently pass through and switch from one north face to a south face then that would open up a possibility of having more output than input. The considered output is this part of the magnet facing and the input is the turning but also the going through this north-south barrier and we're going to go into that next. Okay. okay, before going into how to go across the barrier, uh, I just wanted to more emphasize this flapper. I call it a flapper magnet because it does go up and down. So, as it flaps up and down, we have to come through this barrier and if this 30 degrees is not kept within the limits then this barrier is very very evident even with some of this uh, neutralization we'll go into and it just doesn't want to go through very easily at all but if you keep within the 30 degree uh, firing range, then it's more easier to go through. So that's why I kept it within that 30 degrees for the flapper zone. So we can go through this uh, north-south barrier uh, as easy as possible. Okay, now we're going to go into where we're going to go into the neutralization of this barrier here and we can transfer or switch from a south field to a north south uh, north field uh, very easily so we'll be back I'll set that up okay backtracking just a little bit I thought of a illustration for that flapper and the 30 degrees if we have an item that comes off balance say 15 degrees or so and it's not hard to lift it back up but when we get it past a certain point then we have a situation where it's going to take uh, much more force to bring it up into the perpendicular balance line so that's more or less what a flapper is doing uh, 
if we just keep it within a reasonable arc then it will not uh, use the force as if it was going back and forth it would lock up in fact you'd have to have quite a bit of force to turn the uh, main magnet so that that's just a nice little illustration I thought of okay we're going now into the uh, neutralization by capping uh, you may have seen this I'm sure somebody did at some point <laughs> So if we have a magnet, and I have a small concrete iron nail, of course you know it's going to attract the iron nail. Well, let's say we have two magnets, a north and a south, they attract of course they're both going to pull in the nail but what happens when we cap it with a piece of iron plate well, it's still magnetic but on the cap side we have a neutralization taking place So that's the idea on the side capping, uh, they're uh, one inch by one inch steel tubing. That's to neutralize that north-south barrier so it can go through easier. I hope that showed up real good for you. So we have the two magnets put together, then there will be a lot of force. But if we cap it with the plate, then there's neutralization taking place. So that's the idea of capping the magnets. So it'll allow that to go through. So on a larger scale, we'll show that. This is the the barrier between the north and the south. And that's the one that gives us problems. And an iron nail, you can see very how strong that is and to get through that barrier you can see it kind of flipping back and forth and that, that had been the problem with my devices I couldn't get through that very well so let's cap it that's the same size as what I use on my machine it's a tubing square tubing now we have no problem of going back and forth. This is an iron nail course. So let's see what would happen if we would use a flapper magnet. Okay. There's our barrier, north and south. That's what we try to get through with our flapper magnet. Let's, let's see this way first. See there's quite a bit of pull where that barrier is. And if you turn it around then we have opposite effect. It pushes away. Woo! So these nails I should warn you that these are you take all the risk. <laughs> they are powerful. Okay. Of course, we're coming in north and south. And we're trying to get through that barrier. And 
just it resists going through there. It just doesn't want to go through easily at all. So let's put our cap back on. This makes the whole machine possible using the cap because we're coming through here and the reaction is much much less so if you come back a certain distance then it's almost nothing so this capping is what makes this machine possible we still have a long ways to go there's a quite a bit of research yet you see the doesn't want to go through if it's trying to get through like that then there's, there's, a, there's a force there I can feel so the capping allows you to switch through these fields one to the other and then we can access the forces from the north come through easily access the uh, force from the south and that's what the operation of the whole machine is. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll catch you later. Make every day count.